Chapter 1. The Recurring Dream My name is Geoffrey. I live in a small village in the north with a population that is probably less than 700 people, and I clearly remember my grandmother. Our house is a small bungalow in a small street. Everyone knows everyone else. This is how it is in a small village. I remember my grandmother well. Actually, I think I remember her well. After all, I'm only five years old, and how much can five-year-olds really remember? It is the late 1950s, a time when parents were more than happy to have their children, even five-year-olds, leave the house to play outside with their friends during the daylight hours. Because everyone knew everyone else, it was common that all the children in a street or block of streets would gather to play together, regardless of their age differences, and would spend hours playing in the communal areas. Or at least that is how it seemed. My parents' house backed onto a large communal area of grassy lawn, at the far side of which was an upward slope of around eight to ten feet. On the upper level was a football field and a children's playground. My parents could therefore still observe me from our house even if I was playing on the slide, swings or roundabout on the playground. Beyond the playground was my grandmother's house. It was not unusual for me to leave the house, play on the lawn with my friends, then migrate to the playground, sometimes all of us kids spending the intervening time just walking up and then rolling back down the slope because it seemed fun to do so. If I was in the playground area, it was much easier to go to my grandmother's house for a drink of water or just to spend time with her. I always felt welcomed and safe whenever I visited her house. I loved my grandmother. I loved my parents too, but I had an elder brother with whom I competed for our parents' attention and also had a newly born sister who consumed much of my mother's available time. So my grandmother became my alternate mother figure. My grandmother was a very friendly person, the typical grey-haired old woman who bakes cakes, sewed, knitted, and was always ready and willing to welcome visitors to her home, especially her grandchildren. It never seemed to be a problem if I arrived at her door, unannounced, asking for some attention, a biscuit, a drink of water, or a small dose of love that grandmothers the world over seemed to be good at handing out to their grandchildren. When I started having my dream, I always felt safe because I knew that my grandmother was there with me. That comforted me. My grandmother died around the time that I started having the death day dream. I think I was just too young to be able to understand the principles of life being here and death not being here. I just knew that she wasn't there in a physical sense any longer. I could no longer call at her house the way I had done previously and expect the warm hug and special attention that I had been used to getting. She had gone. But in my dream, she was still there alongside me. She was there to comfort me as my impending death day was shown to me by that calendar. Whenever I dreamt my death day dream, I always awoke the following morning feeling safe secure and much loved. So the dream came to represent something that was welcomed as opposed to feared, embraced as opposed to being shunned. I had the death day dream on many occasions between the ages of five and nine years old. Every time I had that dream I would wake the following morning and feel that all was well with the world. The dream seemed to provide me with a firm belief that I was safe from harm. That belief was grounded in two facts. One, I knew that I was not going to die today. And two, I knew that the spirit of my grandmother was always watching over me, caring for me, keeping me safe from all harm. 
I had a very happy and contented childhood.